Hi YouTube, hope you're all well. Dave back with another video and today I'm here with the GamerStorm MacCube 310p in black. But first... Let's start with some specifications. The GamerStorm MacCube 310p is a rather sleek looking mid tower case measuring in at 425 by 495 by 215 millimeters and weighs in at respectable 8.33 kilograms. With a solid SPCC steel construction, ABS plastic clips and feet and a 3 millimeter temper class side panel. CPU coolers up to 165 millimeters and power supply lengths up to 160 millimeters are supported. Graphics cards up to 330mm or 13 inches are supported too. Colours are available in white and black in the P and non-P variants. The external design is stunning with smooth edge curves all the way around. The front panel is a full metal panel with the GameStorm logo printed on it at the bottom. The P designation gives the roof a cutout to add extra ventilation. Exactly where the P designation comes from and what it means I have no idea as I couldn't find any documentation for it on their website or manual. The non-P version will give the top panel a full covered panel like the front of the case. These panels are held in place with plastic nibs on each corner and can very easily be removed and reinstalled with minimum fuss. What makes this case so pleasant to look at is the uniform 13mm intake and exhaust around the front and top edge of the case. It's the thing I immediately noticed when I took the case out of the box. It has a very premium look to it and it's no surprise it won the 2020 IF Design Award for its appearance. Deep Cool say the MacCube 310 is not just a computer case, but also a work of art. Based on this award, the IF Design Foundation would seem to agree with Deep Cool. The IO on the front of the top panel consists of a blue power LED, a power button, two USB 3 ports, a headphone and microphone jack, and a reset button. Moving around to the rear, we are greeted with a 120mm fan mount, with up to five mounting options for minor height adjustments. The motherboard rear panel cutout is on the left, 7 PCI slots and a full size ATX mount at the bottom. The bottom of the case houses two rails with pads for feet to stick the case to the desk surface. These rails double up as the guide rails for the front and the rear side panels to sit in to close. It's a nice design feature which adds to the aesthetic the case is going for. Also there's a mess dust filter covering the power supply air intake which is easily removable to be cleaned. The rear panel is a full covered plane panel which speaks volumes for the understated look, it's fit for purpose. Worth a note is the tab on the top right side which when pulled releases it away from the chassis. It's held in place by two large strong magnets with a force of 24.5 newtons or 2.4 kilograms, whatever that is, a nice touch. If this worries you, GameStorm have also included two metal clips and foam pads to hold the panels in place. Finally the tempered glass side panel. It's lightly tinted and 3mm thick with an attractive black ABS plastic handle spanning almost the full length of the glass pane. This is also held in place with a pair of magnets identical to the rear panel. Personally I like this approach as anything tallest when done right is a big plus. Overall the case gets a big thumbs up here for all the external panels. Let's start with the internals and we may as well move to the rear of the case once again. Starting at the top Three cutouts for cable routing and the four four pin fan controller is screwed to the back of the motherboard tray. The cable is plenty long enough to route to any CPU header on any motherboard. Running down the center are three more cable routing cutouts and the three of these have rubber grommets to hide the cable clutter. Conflicting here for me as I think for the cost of the grommets, GamerStorm should have covered every single hole for a more premium fill inside the case. Below the large backplate cutout you can spot two 2.5 two inch hard drive or SSD mounting plates. These are held into place with a single screw. A typical spot for these 2.5 inch drives to be mounted so I see nothing wrong here. On the left hand side you can make out a thumb screw. This is to tighten the GPU holding bracket, more on that later. At the bottom you slide it, the PSU into the space in the right hand side and push to the rear to add the screws. I was a little disappointed to find I had to remove all the cables from my 165mm PSU just so I could fit it into the gap between the hard drive cage on the left hand side. This was made a little easier by the fact that I could unscrew it and push it over to the left more to reattach the power supply cables later. 
I'd fully recommend a 140mm power supply be used in this case, as when I screwed the hard drive cage back into place, it left almost no room for cable management whatsoever. That being said, the PSU I have here is 165mm, and it's 5mm longer than recommended, so while it does fit, I wouldn't recommend it purely to make removal and reinstallation so much easier. Had I been able to remove the hard drive cage and put it back after cabling was done, I'd have probably been happier with it, but the fact that the hard drive cage is also not removable from the case at all is disappointing. Should you choose not to use it, you are forced to keep it in there, taking up valuable cabling space. It's riveted together, so without taking tools to it, it's just staying where it is. The final thing to note is the ample 23mm of cable management space, plenty for routing and storing cables down the rear panel. Moving to the inside, things get more normal. The only included 120mm fan is found on the upper left hand side. I didn't mention earlier but it terminates with a 3 pin or 4 pin Molex connector. Deep cool, it's 2020, this needs to stop. No one is using Molex connectors to power fans anymore. The actual fan is decent enough though so I've been inclined to keep it and snip off the Molex connector and carry on. As mentioned before, 7 PCI slots with small holes cut into each of the plates, presumably for ventilation. Back to the top and the two cutouts are visible once again. I still can't help but feel grommets here would have looked so much better. Motherboard support is ATX, MATX and Micro ITX and installing the motherboard into this case was an absolute breeze. The inside provides a large unimpeded space to get in and do your work with minimal effort. You can make out the three cutouts down the side of the motherboard. The grommets here are good quality. The bottom section of the case is covered by a shroud with an opening on the right hand side to clear space for fans and radiators. So up to a 360mm radiator with fans can be installed in the front. Finally, the GPU support bracket is in the lower midsection of the case. This is a metal plate that can spin on an axis, which is locked down to the back of the case with that thumb screw that we saw on the rear. It's a basic but very effective way to give support to larger graphics cards that are prone to sagging. Final mention is up the top of the case, up to three 120mm fans can be installed here to provide exhaust out the top of the case. The included manual and website says there is no room for radiator installations, and I can confirm this, which is rather disappointing to be honest. The case only needs to be 50 millimeters taller to accommodate with adequate spacing so this is something I'd love to see in a second revision. Thermal performance in the Macu 310p is fine. Taken into account I'm forced to use the front of the case to mount the radiator as an intake. The graphics card was the only thing that I noticed had an increase in idle temps. This is due to it intaking warm air passed on by the radiator. For this reason where possible I prefer to mount the radiator in the top of the case as an exhaust. CPU temperatures were fine with the large intake area along the front of the case allowing plenty of air to be pulled in for cooling performance. Under load, CPU temperatures were 3 degrees cooler being mounted in the front of the case versus in the roof of my Fractal R6 that I use full time. Graphics card temps however were increased by 9 degrees and were constantly pushing 90 degrees due to it intaking warmer than usual air from the radiator, a little warm for my liking. This being said, Air cooling could well offer a better alternative in balancing temperatures between the CPU and GPU as the only included fan is the rear 120mm exhaust out of the box. It depends on the trade-offs you're willing to make. So, overall, GameStorm's onto a real winner here in the aesthetics department, both externally and internally. With the neat additions like the GPU support bracket included, it can only add to the positives. Even more so when you consider the price. At the time of the review, availability of the Macube 310 non-P version is $64.99 at scan.co.uk. This being said, I feel GameStorm tried just a little bit too hard to keep the size in check and have lost out on some points here. Increase the height to add room for radiators in the roof and increase the length in the bottom of the case to support longer modular PSUs and GameStorm have an absolute winner on their hands. Macube 310P V2 anyone? It's something I'd certainly buy. There is no denying the Macube 310P is one of the best looking cases I've seen for a while and without a doubt walks away with the Player Design Award. One of many similar awards, I'm sure of it. Click the links in the description below for current availability and pricing. I've been Dave from Player TV. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao for now.